So because this is the end of our unit, we always do a diseases and disorders that has to deal with the unit we've been studying. So of course muscles. We're going to talk about different conditions that affect the muscles. Um, muscles must be exercised regularly in order to stay healthy. This is a big deal. Our muscles were made to move. That's really like the whole point of the muscles is movement. So if they are not moving, they're not doing their job and they're going to not operate the best that they can. Um, so without exercise, the muscles will do something called atrophy. Atrophy is where the muscle shrinks. So here we can see a normal looking leg and here's one that's atrophied. So maybe this one's been in a cast or something and the person hasn't been able to use that leg as much. So you can see the muscle has definitely gone down. Um, atrophy is something that we see happen a lot in astronauts. When they go out into space, they don't have gravity working against them. So their bodies um, lose a lot of muscle mass and they atrophy and when they come back to earth, they are usually pretty weak and take a while for their muscles to build back their strength. Now the opposite of this is called hypertrophy and this is when it grows in size. So think in size. Think of those muscle builders, like those bodybuilders who go to extreme and they have so many muscles they look kind of gross. Um, that would be hypertrophy. And that is muscles growing to extreme sizes. And it's possible to do that just by working out a lot, but for the really extreme sizes, sometimes um, performance enhancing drugs are involved. Did anybody watch the Olympics? Yes. Yeah. And what Russia did? Again? Steroids. <laughs> was it like a Oreo? It was like an ice skater, a figure skater. Why did you say that? Yeah, it's just interesting. Like, I used to like what? Is that something that actually is interesting? I think they have to do drug tests on a regular basis if you're in the Olympics. Well, steroids, you can find those out. Yeah, I'm sure. You never can go to the Olympics, I guess. As much as you guys hate taking the test, huh? all of my classes are testing this week, so I have to grade all of the tests this week. We can be your so didn't plan that one the best. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I'll just play with the ferrets while I Okay, so as we age, muscle mass decreases. This is just normal. Um, elderly people just don't have as much muscle. As much muscle. And um, the same is true for bones. We learned that their bones, the density decreases as it gets older too. So it's just kind of a, as your life gets older, your body just starts to break down in different ways. Um, it becomes more sinewy, it becomes longer, there isn't as much um, mitochondria present that can actually function to give the energy, so there's just a lot going on. Uh, if you continue to exercise throughout your life, that's going to help maintain the muscle mass, mass and strength. So people who have been um, fairly active and took care of themselves and um, you know had a healthy body weight, their muscles are going to be in better shape even when they're older. Yes, Ms. Kinsey. What is sinewy? Um, stringy. Stringy? It's stringy, uh, like yeah. How, how so? What? Well, when, it's, it's kind of like, it's referred to like tendons as well. Tendons are called sinew. Um, in the Native Americans, they would use like the tendons and things as thread to like oh. sew garments. Mm -hmm. So that's what where the word comes from. Oh, and I found out last night, um, completely forgot I did this. I did a donor's choose to get muscle models for our lab before these were donated, and it got funded. So we're getting even more muscle model models, um, which it'll they won't come until after we're done. Um, but I have to take some pictures.
pictures for a report to send them, so we're going to have to stage some pictures <laughs> of you guys working with the muscle models. Huh? So I can send it in to say we used them this year. <laughs> They'll be good for next year. But the ones that we're getting will have an answer key, like so oh, all the numbers on them so nice. will have an answer key to help you figure out the muscles. And it'll have all the muscles because the leg one's missing quite a bit. So. Wait, what did you say? The leg muscle's missing no, quite a bit. Like, but they'll have answers next year. Next year. Why'd you say very good? <laughs> uh, but we're going to get an arm and a leg and a, like a full body that's kind of small, but it'll be a full body. So. Pretty exciting. I, did, I forgot that I even did one of those like months ago. So I was surprised when I'm like, oh, somebody bought us some muscles. All right. <laughs> Pretty exciting. All right. This is in Google Classroom. I didn't want you to have to write all of this down. Um, fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a chronic widespread pain in like specific muscle sites. Chronic means long term. Um, chronic means it's going to occur over a long period of time. Acute means it's usually sharp pain, very quick in one area. Um, it doesn't last very long. So that's kind of the difference between the two words. Numbness and tingling in arms and legs and headaches. I don't really know what causes fibromyalgia. Um, really, there's nothing you can do except treat the symptoms. Pain relief, stress reduction, and muscle relaxers. My sister was actually diagnosed with fibromyalgia a couple years ago. She'd been having all kinds of health conditions and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. And they had to, it took a long time before they were able to figure out that it was fibromyalgia. Um, she has days when she just has like terrible headaches, days when like her whole body aches, like you have a fever and um, you know how your body gets really achy when you've got a fever. It's like that just because for her on some days. So it's a really painful condition to live with and there's really not a lot you can do except like take a nap or take some Tylenol or something like that. You just kind of have to wait it out. Fibromyalgia affects a lot of different conditions. It can cause nausea, it can cause chest pain, um, different skin conditions, stiffness in the joints, problems with the kidneys, muscle conditions, um, fatigue and twitches, so all sorts of different things play into this. So it's not just a muscle condition, but muscles are impacted by it. All right, this is also in Google Classroom for you. <coughs> this is a common one that a lot of people have heard about, muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy is a group of inherited diseases that cause chronic progressive muscle atrophy, resulting in total disability and early death. So this is a genetic condition that is inherited. There is nothing you can do to avoid this. There is nothing that people that, it's just one of those things that's unavoidable. It can be because it's passed down. Sometimes it's caused by a mutation, but most of the time it's like the two parents didn't even know they had the condition and their child unfortunately got it. Sometimes you can tell like if a parent has a, like if you have a past history, like a family history of muscular dystrophy, then other, you, you can predict that. Um, there's no cure, which is very sad because the muscles just don't develop and eventually the person will become wheelchair bound over time. I do believe this is what um, Stephen Hawkins, right? That's his name? Stephen yes. Hawkins has? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no, it's a, it, it's a joke. Because okay. <laughs> Hope said. So well, I was struggling with the name anyway, and then you confused me. <laughs> but I think that's what he has. Um, treatment used to slow the progression of the disease, but there's really nothing that can be done. So by the time um, two years old, they are still capable of movement, but as they age, it, their body continues to degenerate. They do become wheelchair bound over time. Their body usually gets distorted because of the way that the muscle, muscles shrink. It kind of um, constricts the body. All right, this is also in Google Classroom. Myasthenius gravis. Um, chronic condition where nerve impulses are not transmitted correctly, leading to progressive muscular weakness and paralysis. Affects respiratory muscles and can be fatal. So this is a combination of neurological and muscular. Remember we learned how muscles work, which is something you will be asked on your test to make sure you remember the active myosin, calcium, neuromuscular junctions, all that stuff. Um, but if the nerve impulse gets disrupted and it's not transmitting the information to move, then the muscle is not going 
to move. No matter how much you tell it to move, if there's something wrong with the nerve, it's not going to respond. And so if you're not using that muscle, then it will eventually degenerate and hype, um, atrophy, and you won't be able, it won't be able to work at all. Um, there are like physical therapy you can do to help the muscle move. You can physically move the leg or the arm, um, those kinds of things. So treatment is supportive. That's what that means. You can help them with physical therapy and stuff. But if it is affecting all the muscles of the body, we breathe by using our diaphragm, which is a large muscle. And so if the diaphragm is not getting the signal to breathe, that's a problem. I mean, you kind of need your diaphragm to work in order to breathe. And so if it's not getting that signal, that's gonna be an issue. One of the ways that you can tell you have myasthenia gravis is by looking at the eyes. So you can see on this individual, one of the eyes is open and one of them is very droopy. That signals that the muscles on one side are weakening and not functioning correctly. It almost kind of looks like a stroke victim, except they will still have mobility to some extent for a while. Um, strokes are something else entirely. Strokes are when there is a blood clot that goes to the brain and it blocks off a section of the brain, then the brain doesn't get oxygen. All right, this is also in Google Classroom. Muscle spasms and cramps, sudden, painful, involuntary muscle contra contractions. We have all had these, and they are not pleasant. In fact, you may have had spasms or cramps after your activity you did yesterday, um, which I probably should have told you, I didn't really think about it, that you probably should have used your non-dominant hand. So, <laughs> did it say that? You read the direction. Okay. okay. I did my own But anyways, um, muscle spasms and cramps. We've all had these, um, a lot of times they occur at night because you've been laying in the same position for a while and then you stretch or move and then um, you, your muscle isn't ready for it and you cramp up. If you don't, stretch properly before you exercise and jump right into an exercise, you don't warm up properly, then that will cause cramps. If you eat right before you exercise and then go run a mile or something, that's also gonna be bad for you. And part of the reason for that is your body only has so much energy. If your energy is being devoted to digesting food, then there is not enough energy give to the rest of your body. This is why they tell you not to swim after you eat because you, your body is too busy digesting that food. All the energy is in your stomach and in your intestinal tract, breaking that food down. It is not going to send energy to the muscles. And so if you try to make your muscles work, your muscles are going to cramp. Um, really the best way to get a cramp to release is to try and force it to go the other direction. Try to stretch it out. Massaging is going to help, but really like, um, especially like if you get a cramp in your calf, it's making your foot kind of bend upward because that's, or um, plantar flexion, because that's what the cramp, do, cramp does in the gastric femus. So if you try and stretch your foot out dorsiflexion, and that is going to stretch out that gastric nemus, and that's going to make it so the cramp goes away. Because basically, it's a muscle that is um, contracting and not relaxing. Yes. Have you ever had like those foot cramps where it's in your arch and it keeps like going up and you can't yes. do anything? I hate those. The arch cramps are very, probably one of the most common ones. They I hurt have. so bad. Yeah. yeah. And you can't like. No, because like I'll, I'll be stomping my foot on the ground and I can learn to this person more. Yeah, that one might be a one where you have to massage it. Um, the calf cramps are, are very common during pregnancy, so I got those when I was pregnant, especially at night, and those really hurt. We were doing we were for like service days. for lifeguarding, and we were swimming our five hundred meters. Both of my calves, and then one of my foot cramped, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I was just treading water for a minute, just waiting until they went away. You can't really do much when you're. No, so I just wanted on my back until I was good. All right, muscle strain. We learned how muscles work and that muscles can only um, relax to a certain extent. But if you pull the muscle farther than what it's supposed to be,
notes will be online and we will take notes, so just watch the video. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so muscle strain is overstretching. You pull that muscle past its point. So we can kind of see it on the model here. Um, because remember, this is a sarcomere, the red is representing actin, the blue is representing myosin. It's going to stretch to a certain point, but if you stretch it past that point, that's muscle strain. You've moved it too far. It will contract only so much because the actin filaments make the inline, so it can only contract this much, but you can stretch it out more, and if you stretch it out too much, then that's going to cause the strain, and that's going to make the muscle really hurt. This is a really fun model. Um, hot and cold compresses, elevating it to get the blood supply flowing back to it, um, massaging it, those kinds of things, just wrapping it tightly, applying pressure, all that's going to help with a muscle strain. This is what it looks like. It is irritated and not quite torn, but definitely sore. We've all probably felt these muscle strains before. Now what you really want is to avoid the muscle tear. Because if you think back to our tissue unit, you will remember that muscle heals well or not well? Not well. Muscle is very difficult to heal. Bones heal pretty good. Nervous tissue and muscle are the two that do not repair hardly at all. So if you get a muscle tear, you're in for a long recovery. It's going to be a long process because every time you move that muscle, it's going to just pull apart again. So you have to almost immobilize that muscle. And that's really hard to do even with a cast because even if you like wiggle your toes, now you've suddenly moved a bunch of the muscles that were attached to your toes. So you really want to avoid a muscle tear if possible because it does cause a lot of recovery issues. Alright, other problems from lack of movement. So if you just don't move your body, you get what are called contractures, which are tightening and shortening of the muscles. And if you don't move your body enough, then these can cause permanent flexing of a joint. Um, my grandfather, growing up, he always, I love my grandfather, he's amazing. Um, but he had a finger that was always kind of bent and he loved showing it off and he talked about how he could never straighten it. So that would be an example of a contracture. It was just the, the tendons and the muscles in that particular finger were just tightened and he just, without surgery, he couldn't physically straighten it. Um, muscle atrophy means again that the muscle is dying and this is because you're not using it. Circulatory impairment. Moving your muscles helps blood flow. Um, I know that sounds kind of weird, but we'll learn about it a little bit more when we talk about the circulatory system, especially the veins in your legs. When your muscles squeeze, it actually helps push the blood up against gravity. So if you are not moving your legs, then blood is pooling in your legs. This is why after a surgery, they want you up and moving. As soon as that surgery is done, they want you up and moving as fast as they can because they're trying to get the circulation restored by muscle movement. Sometimes if people are really injured and they can't move, they'll put like balloons on their legs that will expand and press the muscles and then relax. But that again is because of the circulatory. You want to get the blood flowing and the only way to do that is by movement. Um, mineral loss, a calcium from the bones, making bones brittle and easy to be fractured. So if you do not use your muscles, it's affecting the bones too. They work together and so the bones will start to lose their ability to stay strong. Other problems from lack of movement, poor appetite, constipation. Exercise actually really helps with digestion. So if you're having digestive trouble, a lot of times they recommend exercise. Um, urinary infections, respiratory problems, and pneumonia. So basically, our bodies were made to move, and the more you move, the healthier you're going to be. So you need to keep exercising to some extent. A sedentary lifestyle is not what we were made for. And so, I mean, you don't have to go all out. I know a lot of you in this room are sports, so that is your way of staying healthy, and that's great. But everybody else, I mean, just, you know, you don't have to exercise all the time. Just, just be active. I mean, go outside and take a walk or, um, you know, don't sit on the couch the whole day and things like that. Any questions about any of that? Okay. 
So we have the muscle coloring and labeling, which is due Friday. We have the muscle fatigue lab, which is also due on Friday. The muscle fatigue lab, I've still got the squishy balls up here if you need to do that. And as far as the graph, you're welcome to do the graph on paper if that's easier. It doesn't matter to me, as long as I get a graph. Um, there is a new assignment in Google Classroom, and it's going to be an assignment to help you review. You are going to make a quizzes game, and you're going to pick 25 muscles that you are struggling with and make questions about those muscles. It could be things like, how does a muscle move? Okay, that's fine too. But then you're going to share your quizzes link on the document that's there, and everybody's going to post a copy of their link. If you make it into a homework assignment, you'll be able to share your link, and then everybody can play each other's games. And this will be a really great way for us to review. Instead of me just making one quizzes game, now we're going to have about 30 quizzes games that we can play as a way to review, because you're all, they're all going to be different. Um, when you post the link to your quizzes game on the shared document, make sure to put your name so that I can make sure you get credit for it. Any questions? Or if you don't want to put your name, you can turn in your link separately. You can like turn in your link to Google Classroom and then put the copy of your link on the document. Yeah. Um, like when we did the bones, we had that day where like we labeled bones like as an assignment. Are we doing things like where we have set time for you? This is the last note, so the next couple days is that's what this is. Um, we'll have all tomorrow and all Thursday for review. Yes. Are we doing anything over movement on the test? There will be questions about the movements. What does hyper extension mean? Okay. But not a lot. There may be just like one or two questions. And that's probably like a multiple choice. Yeah, so. Any other questions? Okay. So like I said, the next two days are review study days. You have those assignments that you'll be working on. But um, the models are out. And again, I suggest you work with them as much as possible because that's what the quiz is going to, or half of the test will be on.